the FCC radio services and what they mean to you and other people. So the FCC services are in parts and what they cover is the part 80 is the marine radio service. So that ship to ship and ship to shore communication. Part 90 is the land mobile radio. These are business radios. Part 95 is the personal radio service, including CB, FRS, GMRS, and MERS. Part 97 is the amateur radio service, or ham bands. Uh, this is for hobby, experimentation, and international goodwill. And then there's the Part 15 for radio frequency devices. FCC certification of radios. Certification of radios for a service used to be called type acceptance. The FCC doesn't use the word type acceptance anymore. They certify radios. Before the Part 95 rule change in 2017, FRS and GMRS combo radios were approved. And Marine and FRS combo radios were also approved. The, FR, or the FCC has said that these combination radios will no longer get certification. Part 90 radios could be used for Part 95. So the business radios could be used for the GMRS and for MERS. But the way they changed the rules, it's unclear whether this is allowed or not. And with the proponents of radios that are out there now for Part 95, there's really no reason to get a Part 90 radio. So let's start with Part 97, amateur radio. Uh, the amateur radio operators are called hams. Amateur radio is coordinated worldwide. It requires testing before obtaining a license. Uh, and an amateur radio operator can use any radio equipment, uh, but it must function within the technical rules uh, so they can use Part 90 land mobile radio radios. And they can only transmit on ham frequencies with their license. Uh, these last two items confuse a lot of hams and the way the FCC has stated about ham radios is confusing. Uh, but a ham radio operator does not have a license to transmit on GMRS. So for part 97 certification on radios, uh, radios are not actually not certified in Part 97, but external power amplifiers are. Uh, radio sold by a manufacturer for amateur radio use must be locked to only transmit on amateur frequencies, and they must also get Part 15 certification. Uh, and that's part of the confusion earlier. They say it has to, ha has to be certified for some part of the code. So I guess technically you could modify a marine radio to transmit on ham frequencies. And some radios are easier to unlock or open than other radios. What that means is if you get a amateur radio, buy an amateur radio and you want to be able to transmit on other frequencies that aren't amateur frequencies, uh, can you do that? Is it legal? Probably not. Marine radios, part 80. For maritime communications, this is also coordinated worldwide. Channel 16 is the international distress calling channel. Uh, you don't have to be in distress to use this as a calling channel. Uh, and land-to-land -land communication is essentially not allowed. I'm sure there's uh, uses in ports and stuff where this would be allowed, but essentially it's ship to ship or ship to land. So you can't get part 
80 marine radios and use them for hunting, talking to your companions. Part 80 also covers the HF marine radios. Uh, VHF marine radios are limited to 25 watts over water. There's no need to have more than that. And most handhelds, uh, their maximum is about 6 watts. A few combo radios do exist uh, from previous type acceptance. The idea being that you carry your handheld onto land and then use the FRS frequencies for land-to-land -land communication. Personal radio services, part 95. The mix between FRS and GMRS has people confused. Uh, before, and then you have to know the rules that you're looking at, are they the rules from before 2017 or the rules after? So before 2017, just forget about it. Just know if you're looking at the outdated rules or any comments or even advertising. I'm back. My throat and my printer were both acting up. Personal radio service is under the part 95. Uh, so family radio service and general mobile radio service both share the channels 1 through 22. The 2017 rules standardized these channel numbers. So they share the same frequencies. Channels 8 through 14 are only for handheld radios and they're limited at a half a watt. Uh, GMRS allows higher power levels. So for channels 1 through 7, a FRS can have 2 watts, GMRS can have 5. <clears throat> On channels 15 through 22, FRS is still limited to 2 watts, and GMRS can go to 50 watts. Uh, in 2017, FRS increased from half a watt for everything to 2 watts on these channels. Land Mobile Radio, Part 90. This is the business radio rules, which have been well established. Some Part 90 radios have GMRS and MERS frequencies locked out. Part 95, uh, personal radio service rules change to make it clear that Part 90 LMR radios can't be used. A radio could be certified for Part 90 and 95 separately, and a lot of repeater manufacturers will do this. Part 15, radio frequency devices. This is uh, a little different than all those other parts. This covers a lot of things. Uh, this part sets out the regulations under which an intentional, unintentional, or incidental radiator may be operated without an individual license. That means the, uh, the person using it being licensed. So things like computers, calculators, blenders might have part 15, because uh, any moving motor could be an unintentional radiator. Operation of an intentional, unintentional, or incidental radiator is subject to the conditions that no harmful interference is caused. Harmful interference means it interferes with another user in such a way that they can't use their equipment. And also the interference must be accepted that may be caused by the operation of an authorized radio station. Uh, so basically if I transmit a thousand watts on my ham radio, uh, my toaster doesn't turn into a transformer. Uh, 